again for Tennessee, Tuxedo and his tail. What is that ridiculous sign you've just nailed to me? Uh, Mr. Livingston made them. I gotta put these signs up all over the zoo. Let me see that sign. Deep Sea Divers Wanted. Apply at zoo office. Hmm. Chumley? Chumley, where are you? So, old Fuss Budget is looking for deep sea divers. Now I ask you, Chumley, who knows more about the sea than a penguin and a walrus? Come on, we'll get rid of all these signs so that nobody gets the job but us. Well? Stanley, your worries are over. You've got your diver. Good, good, good. I've been expecting them. Show the men in. Stanley, you're looking right at them. Two accomplished divers at your service. What? You? Oh, no, 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 no. Out, 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 out. Listen, Stanley, who knows more about the sea than a penguin and a walrus? Who? Huh? Who? Out, out, out. Back to your quarters. This job is filled already by men. And they're on their way here now. Sure enough, a short while later, two professional divers arrived and observed by Tennessee and Chumley, entered the office of Stanley Livingston. Sure, we can handle it. What's the job, bury treasure? Something even better. The giant clam. The giant what? The giant clam. A new specimen for our zoo. See, here's a life-size picture of the world's biggest clam. It's found only far out in the South Pacific Ocean. Won't you be happy to bring one back? Happy as a clam. So long as you've got all the diving equipment we'll need. Equipment? Oh, wait till you see our equipment. The zoo spent a fortune on it, and just for this job. It's absolutely beautiful. Just step outside. It's all loaded on our truck, waiting for you to be on your way. Good luck. And that is that. Now, Chumley, let's grab that truck and head for the sea. Yeah. We've even got a beach ball. That's no beach ball, Chumley. That's a helmet. You wear it on your head. Oh, like this? Get me out of here! Get me out of here! Lift it off. Lift it off. Obviously, Chumley, you don't know the first thing about this diving helmet. Or this diving suit. Or this air hose. Or... Or... You know, Chumley... There are things about this diving equipment even I don't understand. We'd better stop by to see Mr. Whoopi on our way to the South Pacific. Gee, Tennessee, what a nifty truck. A radio and everything. Yes, we'll get the latest news. And here's a bulletin just handed us. All citizens are asked to be on the lookout for a penguin and a walrus. They have escaped from the Megapolis Zoo and are believed to be masquerading as deep sea divers. When contacted, Stanley Livingston, keeper of the zoo, had this to say. My equipment. They stole my beautiful equipment. Oh, if I ever get my hands on them, I'll, I'll, I'll skin them alive. Oh, no. Now look what you've got us into, Chumley. We really need Mr. Whoopi. Tell me, Mr. Whoopi. Yes? Why are fish well-educated? Why, naturally, because they travel in schools. <laughs> 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 
So the way I figure it, Mr. Whoopi, we've got to bring back the giant clam or Stanley Livingston will skin us alive for taking his diving equipment. Well, my, my. You boys have gotten yourselves into some pretty deep water. We'll just have to see what the three-dimensional blackboard has to say about it. Now, where did I put it? Must be here in the closet. Yes, here it is. The fabulous, fantastic 3D BB. We'll just open it up and have a look. If you fill the kitchen sink full of water and turn an ordinary drinking glass upside down in it, you'll notice that the water does not come up into the glass. Right? Right. The earliest diving apparatus worked just this way. They were helmets made of leather, but they didn't hold enough air to let a man stay under very long. So a hose was attached to it and air was pumped down. It went into the helmet and bubbled out the bottom. Trouble was, if the diver leaned over, the air escaped and water filled the helmet. <laughs> very bad. Then an Englishman solved the problem by making a whole suit out of leather and fastening it to the helmet. Now the water couldn't get in, and he put a valve on the helmet to let the air get out. It worked fine, just fine. And that was the beginning of our modern diving suit. But, Mr. Whoopi, that doesn't look anything like the suit we've got on. Of course not, my boy, of course not. Chumley's suit is quite different, although the principle is the same. In the first place, the helmet is round and it's made of copper and has glass portholes to see through, and even a telephone so the diver can talk to the boat on the surface. The helmet is screwed onto a breastplate which is fastened onto the suit. The suit is made of rubber and canvas. Then, of course, there is the air hose and the compressor to pump the air down. The diver can control the flow of air with a valve on the helmet. And now he's ready to go to the bottom. But, Mr. Whoopi, he's going up. Why, <laughs> so he has. I forgot his lead shoes. With all that air in the suit, he'll float unless he has heavy lead shoes, weighing 20 pounds apiece. Ah, <laughs> there we are. Now he can go down several hundred feet and work for a long time finding treasure or giant clams. <laughs> yes. Phineas J. Whoopi, you're the greatest. Several days later, after riding on trains and planes and boats, our heroes found themselves in the South Pacific Ocean, the home of the giant clam. Ready, Chumley? All right. I'll just close the porthole and turn on the compressor. There now. Chumley! Open the valve! Open the... I'll do it. There now. Get over the side. All right, Chumley. We are in telephone contact. Now, how are you doing? Uh-huh. I see. What's that? You're on the bottom already. Don't be ridiculous, Chumley. What do you mean the bottom is coming up? Chumley! You're on a whale. The back of a whale. Get off. Get off. better. No more of this fooling around. Get down there and find that clam. What's that? The clam found you. No, no, Chumley, you're excited. You mean you found the clam. Good work. No, no, Chumley, tell me about it later. Right now, I'm lowering a hook to you. Fasten it on the clam and I'll hold it up. Easy, easy, Chumley! And since you boys did bring back the giant clam, you will not be punished. What did I tell you, Chumley? Tennessee tuxedo will not fail. Instead, I'm going to give you two the honor of sharing your quarters with the newest member of the zoo family, the giant clam.
Tennessee and Chumley will be right back with more cartoon fun.